Oh, nice. Brought to you. So fancy from Starbucks. Is there a McDonald's in walking no. distance? Do you like walk and get McDonald's in the morning or? No, 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 no. Uh, on Sundays, we uh, we do uh, curbside pickup for groceries. So my oh. wife usually goes and grabs them early in the morning and then grabs. Yeah, don't forget. I remember Andre, the last time Rob had that giant super drink that he was drinking on the podcast and we made fun of him. So that was yeah. nice. his, his, yeah, fra- his he, frappe. No, no, no. La- it was last week. I had the giant thermos mug uh, because it, I didn't, she didn't pick up groceries late. So I had Unbelievable. To, yeah. it, it's like many things you have to wait, Wives. just like the Justice League Snyder Cut. Welcome, everyone, to the Heroes World Quarantine Podcast. I am your host, Stupe. With me, as always, are the other co hosts slash people with the journey of this, which is the Justice Look at Stu. Cut. He's already like, um, like so solid. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how I'm supposed to process this movie. So uh, he's, he's get ready, everyone. Bare. <laughs> uh, of course, the owners and proprietors of Heroes World are is with me today. That's both John and Andre. Please say hello. What's up? Hello, everybody. And with us uh, was the Prince of Mischief, Mr. Uh, Ross Godet. Yeah, shut up. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Voice of reason. All right. He for those who will, today. Yeah. For King those who will be listening, <laughs> listening to the I, iTunes and Spotify, I am your voice of reason today. Rob has asked you to open your mind's eye to really listen to him <laughs> at this day because you're really going to have to stretch it out today. But before we go into full Justice League Snyder cut, all that shenanigan, what you've been waiting for for weeks and what Rob has been waiting for since the beginning of time. Andre since 2017 do, since <laughs> yeah since who knows when uh andre is going to do the i have spoken segment where he's going to tell us about something cool so andre please start us off all right so for i have spoken i have chosen um something that is quite apropos uh this week we had a brand new justice league comic come out and it brings on the new creative team of brian michael bendis as well as one of my favorite artists, uh, David Marquez. Uh, And, oh, look, John's got it. And it's to commemorate the Snyder Cut. There's four different Snyder Cut covers. But the best thing about this Mm. comic, it it is a perfect jumping on point for those of you who are not or do not know uh, the Justice League. The League is going through a new phase. They are looking in to see if they are really kind of the best uh, version that they can be are they helping enough people are they reaching out are they proactive or have they kind of gotten stale with their thinking because the team has been the same core of people so you're going to see some new people in the roster you're going to see them taking some changes interesting new villain shows up right out of the gate so you've got some great action set pieces and you've got a really cool looking new um, not new, but a, a kind of a new take on Black Adam, and he's going to get a new name in the uh, in the DC universe. Don't want to spoil that, uh, but definitely check this book out. And if you're a non comic book reader, this book is for you. Um, so I highly, highly recommend it. Great book and a fantastic start to Bendis's run on the book. And again, David Marquez, he's he's coming off of the Superman Batman book for DC. He did some Avengers for Marvel. This this guy can draw. So it is a epic superhero action high octane great book how many marthas are in this uh, andre one or is it plus one or minus one marthas <laughs> if if this is if i'm gonna rate it on how many marthas like you know no no how many times is it, or whatever you know I'm gonna say, is it martha being spoken in this comic book do they no, mention there, a martha there, there was no martha spoken okay. in this comic book, all right okay and and you <laughs> well it's a given you're giving it two marthas up then if we're gonna go yeah. by the metrics of martha kent and Martha Wayne, they would both give their thumbs up on this yeah. comic. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Andre. So here we are. This is where we're at. This is where we're going. Uh, they've never seen us united <laughs> till now. Uh, we are going to talk about... Uh, Not us. Justice Not United. League, Snyder Cut. We are united. We're united. The fact that we all saw this movie, we're united and we saw it. We saw the first one. That's six hours. We're never going to get back in our lives. We're ready to go. <laughs> So, but some people hours? watched it twice. So, well, no, because you watched Both it cuts. first. The Whedon cut was two hours. Then you watched this cut is four hours. That's six hours of the Justice League that you've, you know, gone through two different visions. <laughs> so, um, I am going to. Oh man, how do I do this? All right, I'm gonna go John as always. John, your car first. I want you to give your thoughts on, on this, masterpiece. This this film, <laughs> two to force film 
of Call are, are you of Justice so, are you League. supposed to intro without bias though? <laughs> no, no, I just this, the, no. Okay, so no, no. We're just going straight so in. We don't have the time to by around. this. Then he has given up his neutral. <laughs> no, 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 no. I I think you know typically we we do the 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 intro. Uh, but if you're committing four hours to Zack Snyder's Justice League, you're in. There's no there's no <laughs> you know there's no like should I watch it? You you're watching if it's four hours. So John, tell us your thoughts. Go full hog, full spoilers, full everything. <laughs> we're going, we're going right into it. Go. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, before we start, has anyone ever been a part of the release the Snyder Cut movement? Have you ever hashtag the release the Snyder Cut? Uh, Rob has. Has it know, the tag and stuff like that? So Rob, Rob has done it. I don't yeah. think I ever did it. Um, I, I was, I, I was down with it. I was like, okay, you know what? If there's a different vision for this movie, um, and you're not a Twitter I didn't, user I didn't, though. Yeah, hmm? you're not a Twitter um, well, user. No, I'm just in oh. general. In, in, I'm talking in general of the movement. I never on social media, on social the media. hashtag. But I'm just saying in general this 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 movement. Um, and I didn't even realize how uh, choppy chopped up that that original cut was until like later on learning all this information and stuff like that. And I remember back in the day, we have the old podcast. If you guys want to go back and dig through it, uh, me, Stuart, Andre. This is before Rob came on. Uh, Will and Stu. We went through the movie, and I, I didn't mind it at the time. On the rewatch, it maybe wasn't as strong uh, as I thought before. Mm. Um, but this uh, four-hour ordeal, uh, let me tell you though, I did, I did, st- I stacked this deck. So first of all, me and Rob did the sidekick show, and we did, uh, we rewatched everything. So this is the first time I've ever done that. So I'm, so I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna take my time leading up to this. So we rewatched everything, including Batman versus Superman unrated cut, which is a three-hour ordeal. Batman. So, so over the last. What is it? Three, three, four weeks. We've watched. I don't know how many hours of Snyderverse stuff. All right. So getting together for the movie, um, I got the HBO, Crave, everything, everything set up. Um, uh, I actually was able to set up watching the entire four hours one shot. I also had like my. A, good... Is this like a build up, just like the movie, where you have to tell us the process of what it takes for you? Yes, to I'm watch telling the you movie. Yes, he yeah. already said he was going movie. to do that. Wait, Wait I told you. I'm told you. John, I'm going to take it down and watch the whole thing. Yeah, I was oh, able once? to pull it off. Yeah. So this is the first time I've even watched uh, two hours since mm. since the pandemic because I'm at home with the kids, yep. families around and stuff like that. So pretty much any movie I watch is going to be interrupted by kids, as you'll see on some of the podcasts. They'll just pop up and, and yep. there's nothing I can do about it. So I managed to arrange it. You know, they, they went and did their own thing. Um, I also got it. My good buddy you've seen on the podcast, Pat, um, who is typically the most easy to please, positive uh, movie mm-hmm. goer ever. We went mm-hmm. to see Baywatch. He was absolutely thrilled at the end. <laughs> I was ready to throw up in the dumpster outside. Um, <laughs> so I had uh, everything is stacked uh, to make this uh, the closest thing to a theater going experience that, 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 that is possible during this pandemic. Um, and uh, I'm not going to lie. I, I quite enjoyed this. So we, we sat down, we watched it. Um, so the benefit is that I had someone there to bounce things off of during the slow parts. I was like, oh, you know what? That's different from, from original cut. Oh, what do you think they're going to do with this? Do you think this is going to change? Um, so I just like, I, do we want to break down like scenes later on or we you, just you, want you to talk went, about general? You, you went full MST, which is great. Like you, you and Pat were probably in the background and if we could have filmed you, you guys were topping heads in the background, just doing this back and forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we were great. able like, to like just kind of go, go back and forth. So, yeah. um, so it did not feel like four hours. Um, we wa- we also watched Wonder Woman together, which is a two hour ordeal that felt like it was probably six hours. So this one hundred percent did not feel the same as that. Um, and I, I just liked it. I liked all the I liked the the extra moments. And obviously, he's got way more runway to tell a story. He's got four hours to tell a story. He's got four hours to develop these characters. So I really liked all the little bits. Um, I'm sure you guys are going to bring up the funky stuff. So we'll, we'll we'll address that when it gets to it. The music cues and stuff like that. Um, but all the little bits of like, you know, like even even to Cyborg, he, he adds money to that lady's account. And you're like, oh, he's a good guy. Um, the little team dynamics, uh, Aquaman is like, hey, this this kid just lost his father. This is not cool. Like, like, is he OK? Should he be doing this with us? Like, I thought that was a really cool moment where he where he like it's team building. They, they kind of even though they've been thrown together, they care about each other. So I thought that was kind of cool. You didn't have the weird, awkward Batman versus Wonder Woman thing going on. That was gone. Um, Flash got to do something cool or, or better, more contributive at the end instead of pushing a truck. Um, I don't know why those people didn't just like self-destruct on the truck. Um, <laughs> and then uh, what else did I really like about it? Um, there's a couple things I would change. I don't know. Are we going to 
should we like, should I? You can say whatever you want because we're just gonna free flowing conversations. Because Andre okay, and, yeah, my, yeah. and myself are gonna be saying stuff differently. Yeah, yeah you, you guys are gonna go nuts. So I'll, you're gonna I'll, do I'll, your thing. So yeah, I'll wrap up whatever I was gonna say. So I also do really want if anyone makes it that Under Armour Gotham uh, Gotham City varsity jacket that Cyborg yeah. was wearing. I want one of those, hundred percent. That that thing looked freaking tight. <laughs> um, I know. And, and I ju- I just love the, the the treatment of that Cyborg character. He mm. definitely had a way mm. way more to do. Um, and the, his father's sacrifice at the end, all that kind of stuff was way, way, way better. You remember the Josh Whedon cut or whatever. He, he actually is there at the end, helping him make a new, a new chess piece. Um, uh, the only things I didn't like, I didn't like Cyborg uh, shooting Superman. Uh, we, were, we were sitting there on the couch going, I hope Cyborg doesn't shoot Superman because of his defense systems. Um, but they kept it in. I don't know why, or, or I guess it was part of the original story and we didn't have it, to deal with it. It was originally. fine. That, 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 that yeah. wasn't the worst thing. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like really like it, the logic of that movie made sense because it's like he's scanning and just like Blue Beetle, it's like Blue Beetle's system. I is felt not it, it was more of like own. a Blue Beetle thing. If you yeah. watch the animated series, they sell that Blue Beetle's defense security systems are in, in, a in sentient effect. Cyborg being, right? seem to yeah. be all over. Like sometimes he'll get yeah. attacked and blown up and, and you're like, where'd your security system he's, go? You know, but as we've learned through various DC products, he's going to control kind of. Like he's yeah, yeah, on yeah. the wheel, but guess what? There's an underlying force that can also take the yeah, wheel. Yeah. We, we were really time. hoping that that was not going to come up. We were like, uh, he's not going to accidentally shoot Superman. That thing. And it still happened. And then the only other thing I would change is um, at the end, Batman's plan to drive the Batmobile into the, you know, Stephen Wolf's Citadel thing mm-hmm, of a bobber. Mm-hmm. I don't understand the plan because he, it looks like he gets about three quarters of the way there. And the Justice League is like, oh, we're going to help. And they just drop in. And I'm like, where were they before? John, they were just watching. How are they, they going to get that Marvel slow mo pose where they're all jumping at the same time with the car if it wasn't? <laughs> I don't for think they were jumping. They were like sailing at the yeah, same sail- trajectory. Like, the, the same speed oh. as a vehicle. Like, again, this is why the Justice League is so cool. Like, they just fly, all of them can fly yeah. at that speed. Don't you know? Yeah, so, like, so that, Aquaman that, can fly. Yeah. This is where things happen. So, so, those are the two things I would change. And the third thing I would change is when Aquaman's on the dock and uh, he's, he's slowly drinking his whiskey and, and, they, and they cut to that slow mo, I would definitely pick that Pitbull uh, Reigns of Africa remix to play during that portion because I think that would have been a I think they goal. use that in the Aquaman movie though so they can't they use do, it. They do, they do. That's why it, it should have been his theme song yeah. <laughs> to, to carry that that thread through um, and I guess I'll talk more about it later but we're, we're, don't worry, we're going to go, we're going to jump back and forth this is fun. I just want to do yeah, initial yeah, yeah, thoughts yeah, it's fine. I, I'm, I can I'm talk about things you. that, you know, things that I change in life but I don't know if this movie stands as well if we don't have that other movie to kind of compare it to like going oh this is better than this oh that's different from that so i don't know if this movie stands as well uh without that but it's there it exists it happened um i had access to it before we were able to discuss it during before and after Uh, a lot of people want to discuss this movie i don't know if you guys messages are like blowing up like people want to talk about it so um i guess i think that's a good thing right so overall i'm very happy with it um i would like to see would you watch it again i would watch it again I, i don't think i'm going to be able to devote the four hours because despite but, that no, I but, managed but to is this do that like, four hours, it was hard to arrange but John, that. And it is this, kind of screwed up the rest of my week. This is, this is the same thing bef- as we talked before about one division and stuff. Would you watch, if you watch it again, you wouldn't watch the full, you just pick the scenes you'd watch again. You just pick the last hour to watch, right? Like you just kind of cherry pick. You wouldn't watch four I, I hours. I like a lot of the, I like the little things they did. Because I, I feel like it is a little bit similar to a comic book's pacing. Mm. Um, but I don't think I would be able to sit down Hmm. go off four hours and watch it again i would probably have it on in the background when i'm doing laundry or or something along those lines i'm fall, trying to fall asleep so yeah. <laughs> i don't know about that we didn't get sleep uh, you, didn't, you, the first it. hour you can easily fall asleep just like listening just like the the, the drivel going in the background about there, like, there's, there's, no, there's, there, there's some the funny hour. stuff but we, we also had another contest going on who's going to take the first pee break um which i did not lose so yeah <laughs> no surprise pat um okay here we go <laughs> All right, Rob. I quickly tell you about Pat's pee break. No, and no, no, no. We don't have time. <laughs> uh, you, you, you took your dribble. You, you. I don't give you a lot of runway like Fast and Furious, and you yep. went, and it's yep. over. No, fair enough. Rob, your turn. It is up to you. You as the um, the shining beacon of the Snyderverse of the Justice League. Did you sandwich it like positive, negative, positive, no, negative? No, oh. no, no. I'm just letting Rob go because Rob will go, and then Andre. I have to batten down the hatches so uh let's 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 go rob i um i made a mistake i i actually wrote notes um for this on my notes 
uh, app on my phone and forgot to do it to the iCloud. So it's actually on my phone, (laughs) which is what I use for my camera. Um, So at the beginning beginning of this, you saw me do this going... (laughs) So on a, on a fun side note, have Rob was notes. so proud. He's like, I did notes. I'm like, way to go. You go, girl. Like, awesome. Good job, buddy. And um, then rookie yeah, mistake, have not syncing your iCloud. Amazing. Yeah, not syncing so. to the it's to my the local notes, not I which now can I have whatever. Um, okay, listen. I I enjoyed the shit <laughs> We don't even need to hear Rob. We know we know Rob. Like, tell this us is, what you like. This is for him. This is for <laughs> this is for the, you. The fan. He was part of that movement. So it was for. Him. Uh, so I'm gonna. I'm just. I'm gonna have. It, I don't want to. I'm not gonna have a linear uh, thought trail. I'm just gonna throw. Yeah. Things no, go, 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 okay. Go. Um. First of all, it, my. I was surprised and shocked at how much Joss Sweden had re-filmed for the theatrical mm-hmm. version in comparison to this. Mm-hmm. Um. John and I, as he mentioned, you know, we did the, the psychic show and we talked about this last Monday leading into, we were like, I was very interested to see how much, and it was actually staggering uh, how much and how much of a, of a tonal shift and, and, a, and a flip he did on a lot of those characters. This version, this Snyder version made me, and I came out last week and before that, and John can attest, I, I hated Ezra Miller's portrayal of Barry Allen, the flash. And in this movie, I actually, uh, I enjoyed it a hell of a lot more. He, first of all, he was smart. Like he actually was talking about the quantum physics and mechanics about bringing Superman back. Like it wasn't that he was, he wasn't a goof. He wasn't, he wasn't stupid. He wasn't like a throwaway character from the Scream franchise um, with silly one-liners. Uh, he wasn't me. <laughs> um, and so I really enjoyed his portrayal. I really enjoyed uh, the, the flesh, uh, the flushing out of Cyborg, uh, no pun intended, um, of his storyline and his his hurt and his emotion. I I get that people are, you know, for the in your comments, Stu, uh, here and in private was like, you know, that first two hours is so slow. And I agree um, in watching it when you're you're like watching it and the stylistic choices that Snyder was making at the beginning uh, of having things slow down, like he overused the slow motion aspect in that first two hours. He put in um, these songs that really slowed down the tempo or, or uh, pace of the of of the scene we're watching. You can uh, you can take the the scene where uh, uh, the Flash saves um, Iris in that, which is, it turns out to be Iris, even though they don't name her, that's who uh, is playing Iris West. And, you know, that was, it was a cool looking scene, um, but the whole, the whole, that music, that song that he he put in there, I didn't understand the the nature of it. Um, and I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, Aquaman, the scene with the, the women's Yeah, with the girl. The yeah, I, like, I didn't understand that. that. <laughs> I didn't understand that either. Um, I really feel like that first couple of hours, on on my first viewing, I felt like it was a lot of uh, it was uh, self serving for him. It was a bit pretentious, but I'm, what Phil Mercury doesn't have that when they're it's their movie. They're good filmmakers. No, no we. I think we. To, Andre, sorry, Andre, go ahead. No, I say good filmmakers don't have that. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I, I don't. I think Andre, it's not good film workers. I think it's he had unprecedented powers to do his way on this project. So I'm not going to blame him for doing all the stuff. Like again, he got the full power to do whatever he wanted with this film, and this is what he wanted to do with film. I respect him for if you're going to go all like full Zack Snyder, goes full Zack Snyder because you may never get this opportunity again. So it just shows me what he values as an as a as a film uh, director. But at the same time as you know, hey, four hours, four hours, you do you. Like, I'm sure he probably could do even more if he wanted to, he just chose not to. So he, uh, you know, listen, for me, uh, upon when I watched it the first time, once it hit that hour and 45 minute mark, where Diana and and Bruce are are talking, and then it mm-hmm. leads into their first battle with Steppenwolf. From mm-hmm. there on, it was like mm-hmm. for me, high octane viewing. Like it was, I felt like it just flew by that second mm-hmm. half. So I can appreciate a lot of the criticisms with that first half. Now on second viewing, uh, I actually found that that first half moved a lot faster, and I don't know if it was because now I knew what to expect. 
Um, I, a couple of things. I, I, first of all, I love the score by Junkie XL. I mean, he redid the complete score for this. And it, you can tell, it's almost like he put everything he had into, into the score of this movie. Like it is, it is uplifting those superhero battle scenes. Uh, even the, even the more, um, uh, quiet moments where uh, of reflection of those characters, like it, the score comparative to the Whedon one, it it's night and day. Like I really now look at what Whedon did. It's almost akin to, the Joel Schumacher Batman movies in comparison to this. John and I had talked about this last week and I said that I, I suspect the color palette will be very much like it was in BVS and Man of Steel and it was. And so my son and I watched this on Friday, we uh, the full four hours. And then yesterday uh, on Saturday, um, I said, let's watch the Whedon cut of that bank robbery scene at the beginning, the Wonder Woman one. And then we'll watch rewatch again the Snyder one. And it, it's just so, first of all, the color is different. It, it's a lot more uh, visceral in the Snyder cut. It's, it's, it's brutal. It's a lot more uh, violent. That's, I'm not going to, That's why this movie's rated R. There's yeah, blood it, everywhere. Well, not, not in Canada. Um, it's only 14A. Um, yeah. It's, you know, it, it is. And, and so, you know, when you watch Man of Steel and you understand what, you know, Snyder has said he wanted to try to make something grounded in reality as much as you possibly can with a guy from another planet. Okay. But there was a lot of choices that were made in that movie that you could understand why. And then in Batman vs. Superman, somewhat similar. This is, again, I feel like this, it's a connective thread between all three movies that he's done that you understand the characters and the tone in comparison to what we had with the Whedon cut. Um I love Steppenwolf. I thought he was a much more, um, a, a much more uh, uh, deadly uh, adversary than we had in the first movie. The boom tubes, guess what? They actually went boom. I quite appreciated that. Um, uh, um, yeah. I love that scene, uh, the flash scene. I mean, uh, you know, there's no, as John said, really? there, was no fam- <laughs> there was no family at the end um, to, to have to save. Uh, which is great. There was, uh, but I love that scene of when he he it rests on him to be able to fix this, to to go back in time, and and the emotion in his face as he's pushing himself for uh, faster to get back to undo what has just happened. I, I, I mean, honestly, I know that you guys have got the hating on on it, um, but I look, at this, I, I, I look at this. I look at this movie. With that. I look at this yeah. movie and I think to myself that like, this is this is this is uh this is will be the justice league that i'm going to watch when i want to rewatch watch justice league. i won't watch that whedon cut again uh, i will continuously watch this i really enjoy this movie um I, I just i i the guy had four you know i was talking to a friend nicole this morning um on facebook she lives in in england and she was you know, saying, well, it's, it's so long. I'm like, yeah, but he had one kick at the can to take what he had and put it all in. And so I can appreciate, he's like, listen, I filmed four and a half hours stuff. I'm going to put four hours and two minutes in. I might as well. She also made an interesting point, And it's something that I wanted to bring up here is that she has kids that are just about my, my age, right? So I have a 12 and a nine year old. So I think maybe hers are like 11 and, and eight or so her kids were bored. They they were having a tough time getting through this. I don't think this movie is made for younger kids because unfortunately kids nowadays are the YouTube Netflix generation where they watch things in bits and bites to have, we are used to sitting in a theater for three, three plus hours, seeing certain movies, Gladiator, Braveheart, so on and so forth, Titanic. You can't, uh, it's very hard to have a kid nowadays to sit for for a full four hours and watch this. So I don't necessarily think that, you know, it is made for kids in that regard. I think it's made for, for us, oh, uh, people it's who grew for, up, for so. release the Snyder Cut. Grant, um, <laughs> so overall, listen, I'm I'm super stoked. Uh, you know, I, I'm I I would watch it again in a heartbeat. I'm I, I I really really enjoyed this movie, and and yes, it has faults, and I admit, and I you know would love I can we can uh, I would I'm sure that Andre or yourself will bring up some of the faults that you have, and I would agree with some of them, and maybe disagree with others, but there are faults. Nothing is perfect. This is not a perfect movie. This is not to be put up on Mount Olympus as hailed as the greatest movie of all time. Um, but <laughs> God damn, it's fun. And, so, and wh- it's Rob, full where of do heart, you so. where do you rank it um, in just Zack Snyder's movies? Like of all the Zack Snyder movies you've seen, where does this uh, well, cut well, but there, fall? Uh, but all of his movies, 
that you've seen um, and that you've you enjoyed? know what i would actually it's i re- listen i i'm a huge fan of man of steel i would probably put this up above batman versus superman like I would go Man of Steel bat at this, and then Batman versus Superman. If I was talking what about, about three hundred, are you not going three hundred? Yeah, um, yeah. So in terms of three hundred, I mean, I quite enjoy. I haven't seen three hundred in a long time. Um, I really liked Army of the Dead, or no, was it Night of the Night of the Dead, or what was that first zombie movie he did with Sarah uh, Paulson? Sarah Pauly? Is it Sarah Paulson? Pauly? Uh, Pauly, oh, Sarah, yeah. uh, it was uh, Night of the Living Dead. I think. It was yeah, it was Night of the Living Dead. I really Night enjoyed that movie as well. Like that was a hell of a lot of fun. Um, yeah, with Mikel Pfeiffer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and, in I was filmed in Toronto, right? yeah, yeah. Too. in Hamilton, I think. So, yeah, Hamilton, yeah. Um, yeah, I would. Uh, geez, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I really uh, listen. I'm a big fan of Watchmen as well. I found this to be a lot more fun than Watchmen. Um, so I'd probably go Man of Steel, uh, Night of the Living Dead, uh, maybe 300. This, uh, Batman versus Superman, uh, Watchmen. And then sucker punch, I guess. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Anyways, I, I really enjoyed it. Okay. So Andre, go go time. It's up to you now. You, uh, <laughs> I'm sure you have some strong thoughts on this. Go for it. Um, you start with well, what you liked, at least. <laughs> yeah. Andre, um, let, don't don't think, tell Andre what to do. We don't tell you about your list. I, I'm, I'm you, definitely interested in what he has to go, say. Let yeah, him go. Let him go. Unfettered. I, this I this think, is just like snyder cut for andre andre can do whatever he wants this is his time don't 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 box him in john Ho. except the reverse because usually andre has four hours now he does yeah now i don't yeah <laughs> um okay so it's definitely um nice that the movie is all one singular vision and you don't have the patchwork like you you know you could clearly see all of the kind of i guess you'd use the word a little bit more slapstick or silly moments that we didn't put in and they just didn't fit um you know the cut that that or the, the the tone that Zack Snyder was going for, um, so it it is nice that there was that. Um, I guess to Stu's point, if you do have the chance to use all of your footage, then you use it. Um, I, I just think that I don't know if he had the intention of making and telling a good story. I think it's like here's all my footage and I'm going to use it. There's a good there's a good cut of this. Like there's a lot of information in in what we saw, but it doesn't need to be four hours. Like you said, this, this is, this is pretentious. This is self-serving. You know, it's not a movie and it's not a TV series. It doesn't have a beginning, middle and end. Um, The, the pacing is, 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 is off. The character development is, is, is this small? Yes. We got more character development than, than the, the we didn't cut, but we don't get, you know, we don't get really anything to sink our teeth into, you know, this movie's four hours and there was not a conversation that was longer than five minutes between any characters. And all the conversations between characters are two people. It's either flash and, and, and cyborg or, or uh, Batman and wonder woman or cyborg and wonder woman, or, you know what I mean? To me, it felt like they had no budget and they said, okay, we only got these two actors. Let's film that scene. Um, and, and so I never really got the sense that this is, this is a team right now. Maybe I'm fixating on that. Maybe I would have to watch it again or watch other things, but there was only a couple moments where they were all together. Yeah. There was that one shot where it kind of kept spinning around and, and yeah. And, and at that point, so there's really no, like the one time when they're talking about, should we do this with Superman? Like that was to me, the only, only part where they were really, you know, communicating, um, what I did like. I definitely will say I like that Ezra Miller's Flash wasn't the Whedon version where he's like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't save people. I like that that wasn't in it. But at the same time, you know, Bruce puts these people together who are clearly like rookies or whatever. And we know that his Batman's been doing this for a long time. And there's n- there's never any, can we do this? You know, here, let me show you how to do so or, or whatever. It's just like, boom. And, and I felt that, you know, on the note with flash it's like they, they basically relegated flash to a battery right oh i can supercharge the mother box oh i can supercharge and get you into the thing but then this guy's so fast yet he gets shot right and i'm like man i don't buy that like like it's just it, you know it it was just i'm like the fastest man alive doesn't get tripped doesn't get he just gets shot and he's going all around like i'm like how fast is this guy going he said he has to run faster than he's ever had to run there's debris everywhere. 
and then that parademon tags him. I'm just like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, on the other notes of him indulging, like the music choices, awful. You know, the score, I couldn't even hear the score because every music thing that he put in just made me want to vomit. Like, it was just like, it was just, these moments were so stupid. Like the, the, the Aquaman scene with the singing. Why did we have two Aquaman introductions? Why did we have two Flash introductions? Again, if you're cutting this movie and you want to say, let's put a tight movie, either take out the, the boomerang scene with, with Batman, but don't give me, and then the hot dog scene with Iris. Like, I didn't need, need both of those to know he's a Flash. I didn't need the two Aquaman ones. Like, Bruce went and met Aquaman, so why is he then saving the fishermen again? Right? Like, it's not cut together. And I don't know, like I said, I, there is something good here. It's definitely better than the first, but I'm seeing all these people online saying it's amazing, it's this, it's that. And I'm glad people liked it. But I think you have to step back and say, what am I comparing it to to say it's it's amazing? Am I saying it's amazing because I had a, I had fun watching it and it's an action fest? Check mark. Then 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 God bless. But if you if you're saying you know oh it was amazing because the plot makes sense, the characters was good, the acting was good, the pacing was good, all of these things. I don't know if you could use that descriptor you know to it. You know, um, there's you know, there must have been some other moments with, with Superman for like, as long as the action seemed good, but he just seemed like, yeah, we, we, we just need him. He's our, he's our cannon. He's our, he's our, our doomsday weapon. And we, boom, we brought him back, you know, Lois and the, and, and his mom, like he's back and they don't say how or why, you know, there's, there, like you said, it just seems very like, no, I get what you're saying, Andre. It's almost like piecemeal at times. It's like very you... no, the whole thing is piecemeal. Like this, like I said, it's not a movie, it's a comic book. If you look at a lot of the scenes, like every hero had that iconic just scene yeah. where there's no movement. It's just like Batman sitting on the thing, flash when he's about to run. Like there's all these, and I'm like, yeah, that's amazing for a comic book, right? Like when I'm watching, when I'm reading a Justice League comic, yeah, I want those splash pages and whatever. Like, yes, give it to me. But when I'm wanting a moving picture. I want all those parts to 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 connect. I'm watching a movie. I want some dialogue. I want some, I you know, I want fluid movement, right? And on the fluid movement thing, again, you've got a director who is known for slow motion. And in order to show the superhero scenes, every superhero has been slowed down. But then you have the Flash, whose power you need to show slow down. So I'm like, you can't have both, bro, right? Like if, you know... If everybody slows down, but the Flash slows down to show he's moving so fast, pick one. Flash Makes them seem like they all have the same power so set. fast <laughs> that we didn't see it. And we just had to be like, yep, there's the red blur. We know the Flash did something. But the slow mo all over the place, I would like be like, listen, you guys be knocking, you know, Michael Bay for slow mo. His slow mo was, you know, not nearly used as much in this, you know. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it was. It was I don't know, like the, the first hour and a half, like said, so just you could get rid of the first four parts and and give me the last part. No, I on, agree with what Andre is saying. He's got valid criticisms on on the dark side point and the dark side plot. I like that that was fleshed out a little bit more. But again, like maybe if you cut this thing and maybe the beginning, you have I don't know. Like again, it's not Andre's vision of the movie. It's his, vision, but it's cool that the anti life equation is there, and that's what Dark Side wants. But when Steppenwolf calls him and says, yo, master, it's here, right? And this is the thing that Darkseid wants, okay? this is what he's, like. he's like, okay, my my uh, dishonored minion, when you finish defeating the planet, I'll come and take it. What? You've been, this is what you want. It's here. Why didn't Darkseid mobilize? I could see if Darkseid said, I'm bringing the fleet. I can't boom tube my whole army there. Cool. But then they open a portal at the last battle and and it's not open for like a minute because that's a super long montage and dark side watches as his dude gets beheaded and he knows the anti-life equations there to me i would have rather be like boom let's cut the movie with dark side stepping out and then that oh shit now we got to get a sequel and maybe they make it but like then dark side's like we will defeat them the old way or whatever get the hell out of here step through that portal and 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 omega beam omega beam through the portal for pete's sake you know what i mean like at that point it's it's just like forget snyder not making the movie the the three writers are at fault for that that's just awful right and you know the last thing i'll say before we move on is 
I was so happy that that picture of Joker didn't show up in the movie earlier. And I was like, oh man, this movie's almost over. Cool. And then the epilogue thing shows up. And I watched this epilogue and I'm like, what the actual F is this? Right? This is this is nonsense. The Joker goes on, has this long, long soliloquy. And then I'm glad he put it in because this reminds me that Zack Snyder does not know, I would say none of these characters, but worst of all, Batman, okay? We had a Batman versus Superman where he had a gun and he was branding people. Listen, you want to say Zack Snyder's version of a character? Well, you can't have a character who's the antithesis of what he is and still call it the same thing. Batman does not kill, period, end stop. If you have a version of Batman that kills, he is not Batman. You cannot call him Batman. So when he gets that line, he says, well, I'm going to fucking kill you, Joker. I'm like, all right, totally done. You Listen, make your own Justice League. Make whatever the hell you want, because that is not the character, period. You want to make something, then go and call it uh, the crime syndicate and whatever, right? But I don't buy any of it. And it's just, and again, another thing in the list of things. So people might say, yo, it's badass. He's finally going to kill the Joker. You don't get the character then. You don't get Batman if that's what you see. That's what makes these heroes heroes. If they start stepping off and knocking people off or saying they're going to do things or be like, oh, yo, yo, my version of Daredevil uses guns even though he's blind or some nonsense. You know what I mean? It, it's too much. You're not understanding the character. So if it's your version or whatever, then just make a new movie or, or, or don't call it that because you can't have these iconic people and boil it down to be like yeah i'm gonna have this guy you know straight up want to murder somebody you and i might want to murder joker but we are not a hero that's persevered and that's kind of the point right so okay. the, like i said yeah. the movie okay. is it better yeah is it is it a good superhero movie maybe it's a good superhero movie but it it can't be up there with the stuff that we know as as great or things that are put together like for me it doesn't even stand up close to what we got with wonder the first wonder woman or the first aquaman movie uh man of steel proved that he could make a movie i don't know how he went from man of steel to to this okay. you know and we maybe gotta i want to keep on rolling have, andre maybe okay. he didn't have an editor okay that, and then no, no, no. At, at the end of the yeah. day i think we we talked about it before like i quickly and i'll go my thoughts quickly because everyone else went on and on and on and whatever i i think dr ian malcolm said it best yeah yeah your scientists were so pre preoccupied with whether they should not or could they didn't stop and think if they should so this is the situation we're in with the snyder cut like it it is a movie and i think that it is so ambitious when they first thought of like we're a new justice league movie and we're gonna not do it the marvel way we're gonna throw everyone together and you can see the foundation. Like I loved all of Victor Stone stuff. He is truly the heart of the movie. And it's it's unconscionable to see how like Josh Whedon, now I'm questioning a lot about Josh Whedon. Like you cut all of that stuff out. Like truly everything you said about him is true because like everything about Cyborg is so useful. And he actually, this is a jumping point. How One Woman was the jumping point of Batman be Superman, like, this is Cyborg. Like, we're going to build a franchise around him. Like, I like Cyborg even more than I like anyone else in this movie. They just slashed that in half. You know, the the, the Flash stuff was that. fine, but again, I was watching with my wife, and when she was touching Iris's hair, she's like, ooh, that's creepy. It's like It was a bit creepy. It was like, ooh, <laughs> this is like, oh, now, now me too. And you're like, you don't touch a woman's hair. And like, it's a weird thing. Um, at, like, especially, even you're saving him, you just be like, let me just touch your hair. Like, oh, weird. Um, So, like, there's a lot of things about this movie that I liked. And, and again, it's I, I, I preface this as it's not a movie. It's like a mini series crammed together. Like to Andre's point, and I think we can all agree, the bones are there. And whichever executive decided, you know, Batman v Superman didn't make expectations. So now we got to slice this movie into two hours. And I think Josh Whedon could have made a good, if they sliced this together properly, they could have made a good two hour movie with what they had in place. They didn't need to change much. Just get an editor, put it together two hours, and then yeah. you're good to go. It's just because of the the way that Warner Brothers was thinking about money. It's kind of like Star Wars too. It's like, we're just going to make money. This is what it's about. When, when commerce jumps over artistry, that is the problem with this movie, was that they decided that commerce was higher 
priority than what it is when it comes to art. And that's the, the problem with this, with, with the first cut. And now we see it, we're like, okay, I can see the bones. You know, there are moments where I really enjoyed, you know, the Flash stuff, the Victor Stone stuff, like there's cool things. But to Andre's point before, it's like the beginning, I'm like, I don't need half this garbage in the beginning of the movie. Don't cut Victor Stone stuff, leave it's it It's like building there. a 10 foot fence, but building 20 feet of fence and just making it like yeah, <laughs> snake like, all over. The, like, it's like what, a big what, zigzag. What, like I get it. I'm like, and I'm like, okay, cool. Like the, when Superman <laughs> dies, you could do a montage, he dies and all the mother box wake up. You don't need a woman just, like the Amazon is poking at it. It's like, oh, oh, yeah. like what was that? That was <laughs> unnecessary. Like, oh, the, the, the activation of the, like the mother box is like, it was cool. Like I liked when they were sitting together and, and Cyborg was like, well, we found the Nazis found it. I'm like, oh, here we go. Back to Captain America and the, the you know, the Nazis found it first. Like, <laughs> they, they basically made one of the boxes like a Tesseract, yeah. like very, basically just like the Captain America movie, which yeah, is like, kind of funny. Again, like it's, it's a Tesseract. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's a thing. Like, and, and I look at it going, okay. And then the, uh, the egregious thing, like I was sitting there too watching, the, the, I thought that when Darkseid showed up, it was so badass. I was like, oh, this is so good. Like, I'm like, I wonder how they're going to stop him. And then Ares throws an axe at him, and I'm like, "That's how." An like, axe to the shoulder. He's supposed to be the baddest <laughs> mother effer on the on the universe, and he gets stopped by like three Greek gods. I'm like, "Then how did the Greek gods cancel the invasion?" Stop. I'm like, wait, wait, but then, <laughs> time out, time out. Wait, 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 wait. And, but, but that logic, I'm like, wait. So Ares did it. Wonder Woman beat Ares. So then Wonder Woman should be able to just beat Darkseid. Is that how it works? Because but not no only that, the movie. he's got a fleet and they yeah. retreat. What, these ships don't have a freaking, you know, black flight box to say, oh yeah, this is the planet we got defeated on, Sir Darkseid. Let's just roll back yeah. with more dudes. Like, like, so, but like, again, maybe you thought it was not worth it, but I'm like- Some guy didn't write axe. down the I'm coordinates. Like, so this, yeah. is like, this is like Justice League where it's like, he should have said, you should have got me for the head. It's like, oh, at, at least I would have giggled, but like, you should aim for the, you know, like- so it's the same spot on dark side as it was on Thanos. Was the yeah. axe on the chest? I'm like, okay. So I got that. I thought the Green Lantern thing was super cool, where he, he cut yeah, off the cuts hand, his hand I like, off. I was like, <laughs> wicked, wicked. But then at the same time, it's like, and I appreciated the nuance of like when he shot. It showed all the different cultures and warriors of that time period. I'm like, oh, this is dope. And like they're like Mongolians and samurais, and like all the, the truly the world was together. But yeah. then I'm like. So then no technology's changed. The parademons and all the technology is the exact same as it was 5,000 years later. Like they, they stopped just at a plateau of technology. Like it'd be cool if parademons were like, they look kind of old timey as well. Like mon monocles and look steampunk. Like, show like the progression of technology. <laughs> they're, all, they're, all like steam, they're like steampunk. Yeah, yeah like, uh, like, okay, they're the, uh, older, demons. <laughs> the older model. But like, even, even the Green Lanterns, like, oh, first it was the androids before they got to the humans. Like I would love that there was maybe a group of parademons that were kind of like, the OG, like before Dark Side was able to figure things out. And I started to go on the same same thing. It's like, so there's no progression at all. Dark Side, like, so if warriors from that time period with bow and arrows could take them out, I'm like, well, then wouldn't soldiers today with just guns be able to mow yep. down? Like, so just that was something where I'm like, I, again, I know you thought the process and it looked hella cool. Like, half this movie, I could just like any other Zack Snyder movie, you just pause and then take a picture of it, screen cap, and you're like, boom. You just put that on a poster. Like it's it's that. But then it's like the story itself. I'm just like, man, there was something there. But you could see that they they pushed and prodded to get this Avenger style thing out there. And it fell flat on its face. Because to Andre's point, I thought the interaction with the characters were cool. I liked the one-on-one -on -one baseball thing. Like I I think Kurt C. and Orsi talked about in, in Star Trek, where you want to do these one-on-one -on -one moments to get people like in baseball, you stop. In the game, and the you know shortstop and, and first baseman will throw the ball back to each other just to warm up and whatnot. And you got that. Like I thought, Alfred had so many cool moments. I'm like, freaking yeah. Alfred's the best. Like talking about just yeah. the steeping of tea. Yeah. Unnecessary. Wonder Woman's making the tea, and he's like, yeah. you look like he he wants to get in there. Yeah, but yeah, 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 like, yeah. unnecessary. <laughs> but also, she's an Amazon that's been around for five thousand years. You think she can't make tea? Like it's the, the British. The but that's the British, British way of it. Yes. The British mentality. So right. like I get that. But what I was missing what Josh Whedon did well in the other movie, in, in Avengers, not the Justice League, to be okay. clear, is that moment <laughs> where they're all sitting together, where all the Avengers sitting together and the hammer, just them, Andre, to your point, being a cool group together, like just having like, even that little thing of like, whoever holds the hammer, yeah. people laughing. I didn't see any of the Justice League, like sit there laughing and like look at each other, like we enjoy each other's company. Like you're supposed to be brother at arms and 
and I, and you don't you don't seem like you're enjoying anything of this process, even when you're. But you're referencing a scene though from a second movie. You're but, referencing from Avengers two. They've but already even Avengers one. To- when when they're together and they're like talking about like even when they're yelling at each other, there's still a, an abject thing of like they get along with each other. At but that this point. movie though shows that they are let me, like. Let me finish, Rob, because I gave you unfeathered. I didn't interrupt at all. So again, I'm not saying it's a super fault. I'm just saying like it's a thing where I'm like, oh, okay, they tried. Like they tried. It's 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 an experience, and I'm fine with it. And now you made me lose my thoughts. So thank you, Rob. Um, you did your job. You stopped. Mission me. accomplished. Mission accomplished, you <laughs> jerk. Um, yeah, no, I truly lost it. So thanks, Rob. Um, well, you were talking, you, you were about, talking the about the Avengers, about how they all came together and that there was never a no, scene it, in it, Justice League where they all enjoyed being no, it, each other's it, company. And I think, okay, so I'll, I'll ramble a bit more and then I'll get to it. I, I think that the point about this movie was that there were moments where I appreciated Aquaman just being a good dude. In this movie, he wasn't a jackass. He wasn't like, oh, he was yeah, a yeah, person who genuinely cared. And I'm like, oh, cool. Like, this is just a dude. He's like, when uh, as Andre Pato, the point about like, he just lost his father. That is someone who, I look at Aquaman like, oh, he, he's a genuine good dude. It's like, should we really, like, this is the thing where father's, you know, passed away. And can we trust this person? So him in this movie was way more interesting than just the like, like, that like my man joke was still great. Yeah. Like I still love my man. But like, what, what more, about your boy William Defoe? There was more content. Your boy. Here's right? the thing about that thing: <laughs> the Amber Heard British accent. That was oh, funny. Oh yes. boy! <laughs> like that. That is the like I. Do you think we didn't edit it so out in his version? Hard because it was like Chris Pratt doing like, oh, I also speak like this. Like oh, I'm like this as well. Like I just she was like. Everyone speaks British around him. I will do British as well. Like, I just sat there laughing. I'm like, Amber Heard, thank God that they just decided to get rid of that accent. Where he's like, I as well have to stop them. I'm like, oh, dear God. Like, it was it was brutal. And even Defoe with the long hair, like, you could see that they didn't... Ha- this was before Aquaman, so it was just a mm-hmm. different feel. So, and then the whole bubble water thing. I'm like, thank God they decided that they'd have to stop every time to make a bubble of air so they could talk. Yeah, like, yeah. In the Aquaman movie, they're just like, we're just going to talk underwater. Like, yeah. It was cool. So, like, I, I I appreciated the 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 growth of what the franchise is going and what it's done to Aquaman. And and the last thing about it before I just go was um, the like it's such a and I talked to you to Rob before this about this movie being like be careful what you wish for because once this is done this this movie's gonna was eventually gonna tool into the full Snyderverse and you're never gonna get it. So, and that's what I was like, hey man, okay. money, money talks. Yeah, money but, talks. But, but no, no, no. But you're never going to get that Batman movie because this at the end lined up for that Batman movie because Lex Luthor's like, let me tell you. Instead, I was waiting for him to be like, let's make a league of our own. I was like, I was right. waiting for that. But he's like, let me tell you about Bruce Wayne. I was like, oh my God, like this is happening. Like what? He just told Deathstroke, the Terminator, like Bruce Wayne's secret, ident- like secret, ident- like because at this point, everyone, it's given that everyone knows his identity anyways, who cares? Batman, everyone knows Bruce Wayne. But I just said, okay, this is going to lead into this Deathstroke Batman movie. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Now that's gone. And then this whole same thing too about Marsh Mantra showing up. It's like, okay, this is a weird choice. They, they also like, said the Snyder Cut was not going to happen. Okay. They so unequivocally we're, we're, said yeah. Snyder Cut is never going to happen. Stop okay. asking for okay. it. Okay. So know. then, so we can't even say that because any- you know what? With so all the, all everything's the, off the table the, now. Yeah. With all of the positive things coming, and if Warner Brothers is 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 looking at social media, like oh, people love this. It's probably more so if they can win him back and say, yeah, we're going to let you do what you want to do. Yeah, but right. Like but, I, th- I think there's a chance that people are, that, that, it's, that guys, it's going to happen, but the, the you know, like John media, says, you can't say never. Now they've proven guys, given people something that, that they said no, wasn't no, going to happen. What, what is proving social media means nothing. You're going to have a thousand imprints. You got to spend money in the theater or you're going to buy <laughs> Amazon, buy it on DVD. You got to prove it to them because views of like all the people viewing Either on what if all the people or subscribe HBO? to HBO to watch it, right? Yeah. We'll Let's see. Say release the Snyder Cut. They, they, you know, the movie was dead. Like, they, yeah, but the, they, the they, most there was vocal, no money behind it. The most right? vocal people behind it, the true Snyder Cut fans, maybe not all of them bought it or downloaded it mm-hmm. or got it through other measures. So, if you really want this, you have to support them by buying 
the DVD or Blu-ray, and as well as sub subscribing to HBO. There is a true and tried method is money talks. And mm -hmm. it, all social media chatter means nothing if they don't spend the money to show that this is worthwhile. So all these people yeah. are like, it's, it's the Slack division, like Slack Activision, that's the same thing. Like I'm, I'm protesting at home by saying, oh, I want to do this, but hashtagging it. But you got to go to the streets. You got to, you got to <laughs> go out there and do... I but, but the, I think Zack Snyder activism, did a smart like, move, though. You can't just hashtag it and be like, Snyder Cut, I did my part, guys. We're going to get this movie done. You have to spend the money. So that is my thing about this. It's like everyone can just, I can go on hashtag, oh, Snyder Cut's amazing. Mm -hmm. I want more. But if I didn't spend the money, then it's, it doesn't mean a damn thing. But we, but we, there's nothing to spend it on right now other than HBO. Like, is are they going to make a DVD of it? I'm sure they will, or a Blu-ray, whatever. So we'll, I guess, I'll have to wait. Yeah, to yeah see the when HBO shows happens. get released in DVD. Yeah. You got, but, yeah, but Snyder's put himself in such a good position. Look how much in the good graces he's going to be of all those people that worked on this project. Now, like he's he's going to have Jared Leto on his side, Ben Affleck, like all those actors, actresses that have been a part of this now. They're all going to be like down for him now. So if WB Let's, wants to have those guys back, like you don't want to have Gal Gadot back. At, at the thing that's money talks, like all these guys. Th yeah, those guys are saying. not like, cheap either. They're all going to work. They're all going to work. Ben Affleck's going to take a discount. It, it don't matter yeah. because that, that and, movie. And he probably will. He probably will. Two hundred fifty million like, dollars, John. Books. It's going to cost another two fifty because it's it's going to be what it is. And it's and and on top of this, the fans will want a four hour cut. So you've opened oh, Pandora's yeah. box as to like what what you set up. I oh, yeah, can't no, be as exact as be like yeah. The audience is not worth it because yeah. <laughs> from a movie theater standpoint, and this is my final point, is that if this movie came out of the theater, it ain't making money because it's four hours. You need, they wouldn't you... release it as a four hours in the theater. <laughs> well, then that's what the fans want. How long like, is Lord of the Rings? How long is Lord of the Rings? Uh, 245 no. and 245. No, it was over three. The, the theatrical version was over three. Would, and then would the people go to the theaters edition. to see extended cut? Yeah, they, they would. did. I think they, they would, yeah. But you know, <laughs> see, that's a great point. I, it's 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 funny that you know when you look at the Lord of the Rings theatrical cuts for the for the first uh, the first two movies, mm. like I think the they weren't as good, right? Like they're like the theatrical cut was better. Yeah. And yeah, that's it what was people like tell the, me. People tell me you got to watch the extended cut. Yeah, no, but not not of the first two, but the third one, the the, yep. the final one. Yeah, that you're like, Return oh shit, yeah, that is an amazing movie. This Snyder cut, it, you know, it's it's not like you know you didn't need all of that stuff, but for something like Lord of the Rings, where you only had a certain amount, yeah. but that that final one, and now I am not a you know a Tolkienite or whatever. I did enjoy them, but yeah, seeing that. The, Here's the, the thing about the kind of, yeah. of Return of the King. Bam! Now that that's yeah, and, something you want to see in the, the theater, DC right? The universe set it up where it was. Here's a theatrical release, and here is the longer cut. So it was pretty much there already because we've how many versions of the movies have we got out? Where it's like we already got Justin ba Batman, Batman v Superman, the Snyder cut. We got Batman, you know, like the Suicide Squad. And they're like, maybe we'll get the Iron cut. We but, we've now set the precedence where. The movie just becomes theatrical, and just knowing that if you just wait long enough, there'll be another cut because DC just wants to make more money, which is perfect for them. Like the system works for DC. It's like they just make this movie, they make the cuts, and be like, you know, what? when we release it again on digital, we'll give you your cut longer. Let's let's keep on going. So it was already a precedent before. It just I, now you've let fans have it their way, and you cannot have people now get used to the old way when you've given them what they want the first time around. So I, I know that everyone's like, oh, we're going to be optimistic. But now that you've set this precedence in that DC thing, they're going to want it every single time, which nobody wants a, so, a cut of Wonder Woman 84 director's cut. <laughs> you know nobody. what? If it fixes there's the no problem yet, I don't mind watching it because there's so, like you could see where it's like, oh, man, they need they need to add some things to just fix that movie. Like there's come, something to that movie. So and, and then and if this leads to, as I sent you guys a link yesterday, my the beloved all the rumors of like uh, Mrs. Doubtfire, NC double, like like a, a more mature version. NC-17. NC-17. But the directors, <laughs> NC <laughs> but the directors now say, oh no, there's a rated R version of Mrs. Delphire. I'm like, sign me up. Rated R Mrs. Delphire. Or probably Robin Williams is just swearing most of the time. I'm like, I'm in. I'm in. So this is now open this new genre of films that have like a longer cut. So again, I enjoyed the movie for what it was. It, was. it was a cultural experience. It was something big. And I thought that at the end of the day, like what Snyder did when it comes to representation of people of color and of, of women, he 
did a great job in this movie. Like it, it cannot be said how good it was in terms of that. And just what Snyder had to, and what he did was great. And then you look at Josh Whedon, what he cut. I'm like, Ooh, it wasn't just, just what he cut. It's what he and added. Changed. It's like, yeah, and what he, he cut and changed. Flipped was, the narrative. And like the- For no reason. To your point, the colors were off, Rob. Like when he added the brighten things up and like, was just like I just look at him like, Josh Whedon, like, yeah, you're, you're canceled for a reason. Like, <laughs> I, I give you your prop before, but like many things in life, you, your fastball slowed down and you're old and it's clearly it's over for you. So I will enjoy your past stuff, but this is the line where I'm like, okay, you're done. So you and Andre both made arguments that I, I, I don't uh, dispute in that. Listen, yes, it's four hours. It's a lot. There is a lot that could be trimmed. This movie you know, uh, Stu, you said, you know, if Joss had just taken what was already filmed mm -hmm. and instead of putting his own, deciding to say, I want to make this my comic book movie, yeah. just taking what Joss yeah. had done. And there's been a lot of examples of movies where somebody's come in just to finish and say, I'm just going to edit it yeah. based on the original vision. I'm just helping get it across the line. He didn't do that. Um, if he, he had went, done he that. He went full Spielberg and, on AI. And that was a problem. Right. Because AI is brilliant so until if, Spielberg comes in, you're like, Oh, like Kubrick, God rest his soul. Like that was a triumphant film until you could tell when someone else comes in and you're like, e. So if, if he had, if he had done that, or if Zack Snyder took this movie and said, I've got four and a half hours of footage, but he edited it properly down, I'd be okay with three, three and a quarter. Agreed. I yeah. think you have a really solid movie mm. here. A lot of the other stuff, the extra 45 to an hour is, is, is again it's, it's fluff it's self-indulgent yeah. fluff yeah. that he's just put in to say you know what i've made this i have a shot at putting it all out so i'm gonna here it's everything but the kitchen sink i also yeah. added an extra seven and a half minute scene that you know the you know was my idea but i'm gonna i just refilmed it you know yeah. six months ago and put it in um so I, I agree with all that stuff but i can i can i can accept that it's bloated i guess you could say uh at 45 to an hour more than what it should be yep. but i would still look at this and say this is a definitive justice league movie over what what came before this this fits into the snyder's dceu framework this is a better one woman than we got in one woman 84 um yep. uh I, yeah so like yeah so I'm excited everybody's see... criticisms are valid no no, no I, I, but they're I, valid because about the pacing and and yep. everything else but the action it's it's but you all agreed, and even Andre to an extent, there is a lot of fun in this movie. There's a lot of good in this movie. It's just, it's it's going to an all-you-can-eat buffet and, and going for that extra plate when you don't really need it because you feel a little bit too full. Yeah, it, it, this is this is exactly your point. I'm waiting for a fan cut to make it three hours where they just cut it out and I'll enjoy that experience more. There's, there's moments in the movie I'm like, you can cut, like adding that extra minute to a scene unnecessary. So I'll, I'll, I'll be excited again to see the next version when it's three hours down. And then, uh, you know, we'll go from there. So uh, as we're very cognizant of time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rip through these questions. Uh, John, favorite moment of this movie? Go. What do you got? What was your favorite moment? Oh, favorite moment. Uh, it's it's what, what, hard to know. What rent free in your mind? Like, what's the thing that you go back to when you think about the movie? You're like, oh, that was cool. Um, I, I like the little, I can't pinpoint an exact one, but I like the little bits of the teamwork building. So the, the Aquaman talking about how Cyborg lost his father and that, that type of stuff. Even the moment where I think Flash pushes all this debris together so Cyborg can like shoot it. I thought th those little, I, I like those little things that kind of added up to, oh, I think they can actually be a team. Um, I can't pinpoint an exact scene at the moment. So that's, that speaks volumes. Yeah, uh, sorry. Rob, Rob <laughs> go. <laughs> I actually, to, to uh, maybe clarify, to piggyback and clarify what John was saying, that actual scene where Silas Stone sacrificed himself and you mm -hmm. saw that Cyborg mm -hmm. was trying to save him. If anything else, uh, Zack Snyder is great at dissipating people. <laughs> he yeah. did it in yeah. Watchmen. He did it with the Flash's shoes. Yeah. <laughs> he did it with Victor Stone yeah. uh, or Silas Stone. Um, but I really like that scene where you see Flash at the end of the movie. He's been shot in the side and he's trying to heal up and everything is going to shit. And he realizes that I have, I'm not a hero. I'm just a guy, like I'm the Peter Parker of this. I'm just a guy who has speed and I've only pushed people, um, even though that line was from Whedon. Um, and I have to do something to help. I have to step up. And he, 
and the emotion in his face as he's trying and he's telling himself, you got to do it for your dad. And there's all this emotion and that was all built into the very beginning of this cut when he's talking to his dad. So seeing him racing and, and going faster and then realizing that he's going back in time and he's setting everything correct. Like just listen, this is a, that scene for me coming from a guy who hated the Whedon version of flash. That that's why that sticks out to me. Do, do you no longer hate Ezra Miller now? Well, I think I think uh, he his portrayal of this Barry Allen far better than what we had. Like Joss Whedon rewrote his entire ninety nine percent of his of all of yep. his lines. It's stupid. So he's, he's am I a still, fan of yeah. this version? Yes, but I I think that Ezra Miller. I have there's some issues obviously. Yeah, the, thing, yeah. Um, but that being said, while watching this movie, I thought to myself, now I understand. I, why uh, Andy Mazzucchetti or Massachetti wanted him still for the Flashpoint movie. Maybe it's off, you know, contractual, but because he does deliver a much better Flash than what we had previously, what we were led to believe we had previously. Andre, favorite moment? Uh, my favorite um, part was uh, the voiceover uh, when um, when Clark was uh, was getting Superman and it was it was Jor El and it was Kevin Costner. Yep. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. I think that was the closest we got to you know, uh, Superman. Yep. And uh, I kept, you know, back to the, like the score issue, you, you, you kept hearing that first or second note. And I'm mm-hmm. like, get to it. Zimmer's score is yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 and they dropped the ball. They did it like three times. Oh, they played like yeah. the little piano yeah. and then they didn't go into the crescendo. No, they did, dude. They did. Not, but at the end, not during those other moments, right? Just like Wonder Woman got her score, mm. but I was just hoping for that. But mm. then maybe it's me because I was listening to because I really enjoyed Man of Steel, like yeah. I said, and yeah. I love that score yeah. of it. But that part to me was was super was uh, was mm-hmm. super cool. Yeah. I, I like Andre. I I, I love that the the juxtaposition of of Shorel and and Pa Kent talking. But like that, I, I if I have to pick something different, which I will now. Uh, it, it's it's. <laughs> When Silas is talking to Cyborg, I'm a sucker for like the great power comes great responsibility speech. And that was mm-hmm. eloquently done to say, you have the capability of like, you just, now they're building up this power of Cyborg. Like, by the way, anything electronics, you can do anything you want with. You can kill the world directly yeah. right now with nukes if you want to. So I liked that whole, that exchange between where Silas is like having a conversation with his son recorded about like what it means to, to have this and I liked, you know, the, the follow-up scene where it's like, and let me talk to you about father to son moment. So that that I'm a got father me, twice yeah, over that, that, that little tape recorder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that got me yeah, that here great. the same way that when Jarrell was saying, you know, you got to prove them to the thing. And even when Kevin Costner, who was anti, like you can't be seen, was like, you need to show them. So maybe that was new AD of Kevin Costner speaking, but I thought that was French kiss, like everything I want in Superman, where Pa is like. You have to do this. This is what you have to be. So just the affirmation of like being Superman is important rather than when Paul was always like, you got to hide. So that was the, just the different changes. But you know, the, so the, I the, like that. Yeah. The, the thing is, it's such a great moment. Yeah. Yet when he, when he walks through, he, he chooses the black costume. <laughs> I'm like, oh, like, what are you doing? You because know, put on the comic book the appropriate. You have to it's, inspire but, yeah. them. You Here's know what the I mean? Interesting thing though. So wait, John didn't have one because he couldn't remember, but <laughs> But uh, Could no, you but John, with- but John mentioned about Aquaman feeling bad for for Cyborg. Uh, Andre mentions about you know Superman that uh, of the, you know his two fathers essentially. You, you know, Stu, you just mentioned about about Cyborg in a conversation with his father and this and that. There's obviously this theme here, and I mentioned about the you know Flash and, and you know having to rise up. This movie is full of heart. All four of our favorite scenes involve emotion and heart. And that is something that you don't get in a lot of superhero movies. You don't get well, that emotional attachment that thing. allows us to connect to it. And and so for all three of your connections are all about fathers and the loss of no, fathers to, and this and that. Fair, That's just... Every connection was about a parent because every single Aquaman had a whole thing about like he's standing with his father and, and then Miro was like, I know your mother. He's talking about parents. Barry yeah. Allen had the scene with his dad. Well, Everyone Rob, think, had a scene with their I parents. I think every superhero movie has yeah. has moments of heart, yeah. man. It's just, Even it's when just Diane, when, like, when you look yeah. at look at the first look at look at Winter Soldier at the end of the movie where he's like, I'm not gonna fight you, Bucky. You're my best friend. You're yeah, not, that's hard. The good yeah. ones, the you know, the, the, the good and great ones do. I think it's a testament that we all pick these moments because some of the other stuff, like 
listen, he didn't have the effects budgets to finish all the fights, but you can't pick any of the action scenes in this movie. None of them were like, like the best we've ever seen. Also, we'd already seen them in the other cut most of yeah. the time, mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah, Superman coming in and doing that, you know, punch to, to thing at the end. Yeah, but we saw that. The Wonder Woman thing, we kind of saw that, right? Like when she's blouncing the bu- yeah. bullets at the at the museum high school. But a much better was. scene. The, like, the much this better is, scene. Yeah. But again, Bloated we'd scene. see yeah. part of it. Whereas this stuff we're talking about is new to this cut, yeah. right? But so, isn't but that, but that's, well, I give that all that, all the extended cut away if they added more of the, the cyborg in that movie. Like, I don't need to see that scene in Wonder Woman where she's doing more, where she's poking the, the box up. Like, just cut That it was down. much better, though. I mean, throwing it. Yeah, I but, mean, but right, it was like, unnecessary if, if it means getting less cyborg. If a three-hour cut is like, I get the scene with Silas talking about I what it means saying. to be. Yes. Like, I like, would cut away the, the, the T. I would cut away Alfred with the T to make sure yeah, yeah, to not yeah, sacrifice yeah. the cyborgs up. Yes, I agree with what you're saying. You gotta cut more All because I'm saying you can't is have that this movie is full of heart. Get rid of the whole bank job. But this <laughs> movie is full of heart, and 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 it from Zack Snyder putting everything into it to Junkie XL putting everything into it to the, like this this is what this movie was. You, to to point you could like that scene just cut out most of the Wonder Woman stuff, and at the end when just like oh. When he goes princess, you can be anything you want to be. That was awesome. But you don't need all of that fight scene. You just, she could show up, just punch people out. And then the little girl's like, oh, wow, amazing. Like, you Yeah, but you want to see that blood on the wall. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, let's live. We, we're time, time, time. Uh, worst thing about this movie, John, go. Why are you guys going to make me go first? Worst, worst thing is John, still, I go you um... first because you never have anything to say. This yeah, is, this is, worst like, thing is still... You don't go first, I... you don't say anything at all. So don't don't yeah. complain about going first. Worst, worst thing is still the, the, the cyborg defense systems. I think Superman could have just went berserk without okay. random cyborg cannon forming and shooting him. Yeah. So I, I, would, I would say that. And I feel like that would be an easy yeah. sniff, especially given that he was able to see the repercussions of the weak point. Uh, Rob? The I think they're Nordic, the Nordic girl, uh, girls' choir. <laughs> yeah. uh, but legend yeah. has it that they worship yeah. the sea god, and yeah, they, yeah. that's their yeah. tribute to him yeah. that they sing every right. time he enters. Yeah, but she picks the... up his sweater and she's like smelling it, and I was like, she's got to <laughs> hold on to it for the next time he merges from the water. <laughs> yeah, she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, got yeah. your clothes. <laughs> no, I, yeah, so yeah, yeah, that would probably for me She'd the worst. Probably put it in her IKEA drawer that they made in, in Sweden. <laughs> right. So yeah, that would for me. Yeah, uh, Andre. Um, well, Rob picked like you know. <laughs> He's gonna pick the sweater scene, but I'm I'm gonna pick the um the stupid as hell Martian Manhunter conversation with Lois. Oh hey, the world needs you, Lois. Mm. I'm gonna just watch Dark Side come in and not help. Yeah. And then and then <laughs> I'm gonna come at the end and say that he's coming back. So yeah. what the get the get the hell out of here? It just frivolous fan service you know, whatever, you know, like just pretty sure that was supposed to be Tyrese at the end. (laughs) Go away. (laughs) As Green Lantern, that would have been better. Yeah, it was supposed to be John Stewart Tyrese. I'm pretty sure he was probably busy filming Fast and the Furious. Yeah. (laughs) They lost out. Stuart, did, what did you, did anybody, I know I already said that stuff that I thought was the worst. What Uh, about the the, the nightmare scene? Sorry, the nightmare scene at the end that they filmed this because you could tell they oh, didn't was make filmed, a new yeah, they didn't make after. a new cowl because Affleck obviously had Gained lost some weight. Yeah. He was the no, he lost weight, so oh, the cowl skinnier, wasn't yeah. wasn't fitting as snug as it had. It was the opposite of what happened with Whedon when he was way he had yeah. gained too much weight. So uh, to me, I, I felt like that almost the whole thing was unneeded. That whole yeah. last yeah, seven yeah, minutes, and then Martian Manhunter flying down, which apparently was supposed to be Green Lantern they couldn't make it work so they couldn't get ryan reynolds available. no apparently ryan reynolds zach snyder came out and said that they were trying to make it where it was actually yeah. warner brothers said no we've got plans with with so, Lantern, yeah. so yeah so, yeah <laughs> yeah no it's it is what it is okay um as we finish out our final thoughts uh i think andre had already jumped in and asked where this movie falls in the dc canon of oh sorry we all movies it's fine it's okay uh, you you did it specialize to the Zack Snyder. I'm gonna go general. Uh, is this the greatest DC EU movie ever made, Rob? Uh, I'm gonna give you a second, but John, you're first. <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 definitely in my top three: Aquaman, this, and uh, Man of Steel. Um, I feel like this is this might take my new top spot just because it's got the other characters and it doesn't have the weird ending that Man of Steel has. So I I have to rewatch those. So. What weird um, ending did Man of Steel have? Yeah, the whole Zod, the, the whole Zod, the whole Zod stuff, and you know, the snapping of the neck, that kind of like the whole, the whole, the whole final act is not as strong as the beginning of the movie. Okay, um, for me, for me, 
no, yeah. Um, so, uh, so it's I, I think it's it's definitely in the running for first. That's I would say. Rob, yeah, I, I agree in that it's in, it's definitely in the top three. I I wouldn't say uh, for the same reason that John, but I would put. I think I got Man of Steel, the first Wonder Woman, and then this movie for sure, um, for me. So, Andre, um, not even close. I I'd probably put it. Uh... Definitely not in the top three, maybe not even the top five. You it's worse than Batman for Superman for you? Um because if you look at this, so Aquaman's up there up there. So I so my, my top ones would probably be Man of Steel, yep, uh Aquaman, yep, um Wonder Woman. Yep. Um Suicide what else? So, uh, <laughs> what else? He just assumed <laughs> there yeah, was other just, movies no, to slide it's, in. It's, it is difficult, like, but care. there's not slide that me. many. You know what? There's yeah, not there's, that many. There's not that many. many but Batman, like five is your max. There's five. <laughs> Suicide Squad. <laughs> if, there's, if, there's, if there's five. Where's the like, Batman versus six Superman six movies, I think, right? I'm, well, no, this makes it six. Yeah. You got Where's two Wonder Batman Woman. Superman? You have yeah. MOS, BBS, and Batman. That's five. Wonder Woman 84. Worse than Batman versus Superman, yeah. Wow. I think you need to rewatch that. And watch that one, yeah. No, but see, again, Batman, to me, Batman versus Superman, while ter- like there was a couple more scenes and Gal Gadot stole that. You know what I yep. mean? Like this, yep. like I said, this movie wasn't a movie to me. It was a patchwork of, 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 of events. So it's not cut it like a movie and not four hours of just, this is, this is what I put together. And that's why it loses. Like, to be honest with you, even like, even how as bad as Suicide Squad was, it oh, was yeah, a movie. movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it, movie, it, yeah. it flowed. Movie, yeah. <laughs> this this is a bunch of scenes stuck together till it comes together at the last act, and that's not a movie, yeah. right? It, it goes the what Andre wants, where it just blares music at you half the time, and you're like, "Oh, here's Queen playing," and I can't hear the character speaking, but here's the loud music blaring in the background. Eh. So yeah. I completely forgot about part. Suicide Squad. <laughs> Yeah. I forgot. Oh, and you know, Harley, Harley Quinn. I forgot Quinn. about that as yeah. well. Harley Quinn. Yeah, there's like seven. So there's yeah, maybe we, seven. There's okay. maybe seven. Yeah, you guys are. I'm, I'm looking through the list. I'm like, there's more. And then, you, and then you add the Josh Whedon cut. So there's that's there's four Snyderverse stuff. Yeah, like there's there's right a the lot gate. of 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 extended universe movies because if you look at it, it's it's quite uh, Man of Steel, seven. Batman v Superman, right. Dawn of Justice, Suicide Squad, One Woman, Justice League. Aquaman, Shazam, which no one talks oh, Shazam. about. Shazam yeah. is not even in oh. Rob's top three, which is a, a forgot travesty. about Shazam. Yeah. Birds of Prey, Wonder Woman eighty four, and Zack Snyder. Oh, I forgot about the two Wonder Womans. <laughs> yeah, you forgot. all you guys have forgotten all of it. So, so it's probably um, yeah, we're probably at yeah. It, it's I'm probably so nine. I'm still good with my nine. top three pick. Yeah, so there it is. Okay, so as we we ramp down, uh, John, Stu, was it your top? <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Um, what's your top then? God, none of them are my top. Uh, they're all tied. <laughs> the first half of Wonder Woman? Honestly, uh, <laughs> Chris Pine pushes Wonder Woman to the number one. Wonder Woman number one is still... Wonder Woman, the first movie, is my yeah. number one movie because Chris Pine and Wonder and Gal Gadot, they do such but a master job. Yeah, but the same thing you can say about Superman, which is the problem I have with Superman. I love Superman too. It's my number two movie, but the third act crushes me. But Wonder Woman 2, the third act is bad too, but... Wonder Woman. The third for, act of Man of Steel is not as bad as the third act of Wonder. Oh, it's not, not that. Yeah, yeah, definitely not. Yeah. Uh, but but here's the thing: like, but Gal Gadot does a better and and Chris Pine do a better performance than Henry Cavill and 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 uh, Amy Adams. Uh, the Amy Adams. So like, it just I just have to choose with the joy and fun of that you movie. Blend them. Like, if you blend was, that chemistry, you, you can rewatch Man Wonder Woman that first part of first act one and act anytime, any place, anytime, and I'm happy. I'm like, cool, man. But just like Man of Steel, it's like every once in a while, I'm like, I feel the need and I'll play it. But but to your point, Andre, a lot of it has to do with the Hans Zimmer score. I'll just play the Hans Zimmer score. I don't need to watch the movie. Yeah. But Wonder Woman, when it when you when it's at its best, and when that first time it comes in, it builds up when she's on the trenches and she's fighting and like and like it, it just happens. And you're like, oh, this is a cool action sequence, way cooler than anything Superman did in the other movies. Superman just. You, you, we talked before, he's so hard to do a fight sequence because he's amazing and unstoppable. And he's so hard to do it in comic books. We just, he lift up basically the planet and crush someone else with it. But Wonder Woman using swords and shields and doing this thing, like if there's an elegance to her as an Amazonian fighter where you're like, oh, you can actually do choreography. Superman doesn't have to learn karate. He just he just punched <laughs> no, someone in the in face. In Man of Steel, they did do like that that grappling when he fought. Um, what was yeah, her name? but like, but it's that like, was he's cool. Like, but he's yeah, a yeah, brawler. That, like, that fight in the town. But that's definitely yeah, one of the best but fights. But like, yeah. if you look at Superman, Andre, you can agree he's never like and went until he loses powers. He doesn't have to do anything about technique. 
the same thing when you watch the rock movie the fast and furious movie where the huddle of like it just elbow is showing the rock is just pure power like you can watch it and you when he do the huddle thing it shows that the 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 arm length and just pure power and you watch jason statham jason statham's thing is like technique it shows the angle of what jason statham does and that's the difference between superman and wonder woman wonder woman's about technique it's about years of practice amazonian training superman just a tank. i like how hobbs and shaw's become a superhero movie by the way yeah like that that's, I'm, <laughs> I'm just showing the example for the people at home but the difference between wonder woman and superman it's like superman is a tank he doesn't have he to just have call himself black superman for that movie yep. he, he, he just did. basically <laughs> like awesome superman can only good thing about that movie badly like he doesn't have that form he just is like he doesn't need it because yeah. he's just awesome so like he that's needs to difference. take some classes I mean, he didn't have to take a. He didn't have to. Let's, he, let's say he didn't take karate classes at the classes at the Y. So let's yeah. has never done that before, <laughs> and and so you know that's why I love that movie more than I love Superman because Superman, it's 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 Superman and I love Superman, but just the, the differences and trials and tribulation of one woman can't be unmatched. Okay, so uh, that was a lot. Okay, uh, John, Andre. <laughs> that's good. Uh, I, like that. I I everyone a quick thing. Yes or no? Do you recommend that people watch this movie, John? Yes or no? Um, it's again, it's one of those hard things where it's like, if you want this, if you wanted this, yes, hundred percent, watch it. If if you if you didn't like any of Snyder's other whatever catalog, then why are you even considering yep. a four hour yep. super cut? Yep. So yeah, if 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 you wanted this, then yeah, watch it, hundred percent. You're gonna dig it, Rob. Yes, of course, watch it often, <laughs> often. And Rob is actually watching it now as we speak. Uh, Andre- <laughs> I do. <laughs> Rob is like you fun for the are. whole family. You know you're doing it, uh, no. Andre. Yeah, I would say watch. Like again, what else is on right now? We're all at home, you know, <laughs> doing it. And hey, you know watch, what? Watch, watch it. Star Wars Rebels, Andre. Don't tell them to watch Rebels. <laughs> yeah, but listen, yeah, have watch it. And if you are enjoying this, yeah. hit up your local comic book store and say, "Hey, yeah. I like the Snyder Cut. What are some of the best Justice League graphic novels you can recommend to me?" Or yeah. I like the Justice League. I want to see more. Or I want to see the true Justice League, Andre. You keep talking smack about this cut. Yeah. Show me what you love about Justice League. Hit us up, you know. Awesome. So. Okay, perfect. That's a great segue. John, Andre, where can they find you guys? Because Andre's already yeah. in the plug already. Go. So Heroes World Online on the social media, all one word. Uh, if you keep it together, that's how you find us the easiest way. So the website, uh, the Facebook, the Instagram, and the YouTube. So if you're on the YouTube, please subscribe uh, and hit us with, uh, with the comments and everything like that. Stars, likes, uh, follows, yeah. all that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on the do. iTunes review, five star review, yeah. a, re- a review. Please, it'll help very us helpful. Uh, just to get more people to listen. So, uh, any help would be very much appreciated. If you can't help John and Andre financially by buying stuff, just like them social media, it'll help them. That still helps them. Like, uh, Andre, subscribe, share. Yeah, you know that yeah. that stuff's free and it does help more than more than you know and yeah. more than you think. Uh, yeah. So, so th- this is the Slack you... division I was saying of before. But uh, yes, Andre, where can we yeah, find you and, in the uh, desert of the real? Yeah, we're back open uh, in the store and we are um, eighty six to one Warden Avenue. Uh, it's just uh, north of Toronto, uh, so we're very close to Toronto. So come check us out. Lots of great stuff in store. John and myself have been rearranging the store so it looks better than ever. Stock is slowly flowing back in. So I'd probably say by the end of this month, beginning of April, um, hopefully we will have everything back up. But we are still fully stocked. It's just mean meaning that like, there's some stuff that's really been hot and hasn't been restocked. Like House of, uh, what's the... Uh, House of X and X. Avengers Disassembled. You know, there's, those trades haven't come back in yet because of WandaVision being so popular and stuff. But we got tons of stuff for you to see. Comic books, board games, action figures, an amazing selection of those uh, miniature games so you can get your hobby on. Uh, comic books, of course, and graphic novels. So come on and check us out. Rob? Yeah, Ross. so you can find uh, John and I uh, live Mondays at 8 o'clock on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, uh, 8 o'clock Eastern uh time uh, tomorrow uh we are going to be essentially having discussions with everybody uh who wants to jump online and talking about this this cut like letting people you know you've heard our thoughts now we're going to hear your thoughts of what you think uh worked didn't work what you liked didn't like um what you loved and um yeah so join us tomorrow on the uh, youtube facebook or twitch streams and uh and, and we'll just kind of uh Put a, a nice ribbon and bow on top of our uh, Snyderverse uh, re, uh, re-watching party we've been doing the last four weeks. Awesome. So thank you all for watching. Please uh, support your local store if possible, buying whatever you can, support <laughs> local. 
And if you can't do that, please again support virtually by uh, you know liking, subscribing, and all that fun jazz. Yeah. So thanks all. I hope you all enjoyed this. I'm sure we all did. And uh, yes, see you all later. You, Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Bye.